All right, guys, what's going on? This is Wes again. All right, so here we are. We are booted up on our uh, freshly on our fresh install of Raspberry Pi OS on our SD card on our Raspberry Pi 4. All right, so before I could before I could get this up, I had to do a couple things, uh, and I had to do those while connected to. Uh, TV monitor or whatever a display I had to be connected to a display to be able to do all this first off is once you install this it's gonna run you through some initial settings and whatnot uh, and you'll get to you'll get to set your keyboard layout you'll set to uh, you'll get to set your uh, your initial uh, Wi-Fi connection you'll get to set your uh, your time zones and all that stuff uh, once you're done with that after you've connected to uh, after you've connected to your Wi-Fi uh, and all that type of stuff uh, the first thing that I needed to do here before I could start doing this video was go over here on the menu go on preferences and I had to go down here to Raspberry Pi configuration alright here on the Raspberry Pi configuration the first thing that we're doing is we're gonna go to interfaces and we are going to check we're going to enable SSH and we are going to enable VNC. Now, once you enable these two, they will they will begin upon reboot. Like upon upon you uh, booting up your Raspberry Pi, these two are going to fire up and you'll be able to connect to this Raspberry Pi remotely, uh, either from either from uh, through SSH or through VNC. Uh, right, right now, my Raspberry Pi is not connected to a monitor anymore uh, because I did, I did some, uh, some couple things here, um, which we will do right now just to show you what we did. This is the first, this is the, uh, this is the first step in order to go. Uh, well, this is the second step. The first step is to enable SSH and enable uh, VNC. Once you open the VNC, uh, once you enable VNC, you're going to see this icon right here. This is your VNC server. Uh, what is that? That's weird. Wait, it is weird. Weird. All right. Bottom line, you're going to go to this icon right here. This little icon here is going to open your your VNC and it's going to tell you the IP address that you're going to use to configure your VNC connection here. Other than that, that's done. Next thing that we're going to do, you're going to, nope, not really. You're going to control alt T and it's going to open a terminal window. All right. Now you're going to go and type sudo, sudo raspi dash config. All right sudo raspi config here we are we are on the command line interface uh, raspberry pi configuration options so we're gonna set we're gonna set our uh, screen resolution so that this raspberry pi uh, detects a mock uh, display uh, resolution type while you are uh, connecting remotely uh, because if not then it's only gonna let you VNC while you're connected to an actual uh, display so we're gonna go to advanced options here we're gonna go to resolution pretty self-explanatory and now it'll show you this default monitor oh that's why because I am connected here let me go ahead and back out I'll do that now should be able to go back. Advanced options. Resolution. Now here, we are going to set your standard resolution. I always go for 1080p. It's just the better resolution. So we're going to go ahead and yep, it is set to that resolution. That is finished. Would you like to reboot now? No, we're not going to reboot just yet because before we reboot, we're going to do something else. We're going to do a sudo nano slash boot slash
slash config dot txt we're gonna um, we are gonna go and we are gonna overclock our Raspberry Pi to squeeze in the the most out of this Raspberry Pi so we're gonna go down to this line right here you said you see where it says uncommon to overclock the arm arm is your ARM whatever your, your CPU alright so first one first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna uncomment this one we're gonna enter we're gonna go up we're gonna enter again and we're gonna do over underscore voltage equals eight you can play around with these uh, and get the the right over voltage setting that works best for you uh, for me this is what's been working uh, based on the services that I got running here and whatnot uh, we're gonna delete these oh shoot what happened There we go. Okay. Q arm freak equals two one four seven. And then we're gonna do GPU underscore freak equals seven fifty. Boom, that's done. Now control X. You're gonna save that with Y, that's yes, and then press enter. Boom that is saved now we're gonna open oh shoot look at that it's my dudes on discord going wild alright we're gonna open uh, a web browser and as you can see I have nothing configured here this is just straight up brand new uh, installation of Raspberry Pi OS okay so I'm gonna close here because we have two windows for some reason all right right here we're gonna go and do uh, argon fan hat script see this first link right here argon 40 fan hat for raspberry pi we're gonna click on that and then this link right here this is what you want to do so we're gonna grab all that we're gonna control C we're gonna copy that we're gonna come over here we're gonna right click we're going to paste it now we're going to go back here and we're going to delete this boom now we're going to enter that's done alright so now you should be able to see that you got these configurations here now we're gonna go ahead and open this one yep we're gonna execute in terminal Boom. once that's there you can set up you can set up this configuration however way you want alright but these are the settings that I personally like to keep my Raspberry Pi as cool as possible uh, without reaching uh, max, you know, max temperatures. So press yes to continue. Mm -hmm. Oh, there we go.
go back again. I'm, uh, somebody at home is streaming too much. All right, press Y, and then you're going to choose one of these options, right? We're going to go with number three. Now, provide minimum temperature in Celsius. What is going to be the minimum? It's going to be 45. All right. What is going to be the fan speed? 25%. Now, 50. 50 again. 55. 75. 60. 100%. Boom. That is set. Now, you should automatically hear your Raspberry Pi, uh, uh, the fan hat, you should hear that it stopped whining. Uh, that means the configuration took, uh, it took effect. All right. So before we reboot at this point, we're going to go ahead and do one more thing here. And that is going to be to install zero tier. All right. So. Right here, we're going to do curl dash s https install dot zero tier dot com. sudo bash now what we're doing here is we're installing zero tier client all right so right here success you are zero tier address boom this address hey keep an eye on this right because that is that is essentially your sort of mac address for connecting to a uh, zero tier this is your unique id that identifies you as whatever client uh, so we're going to come over here before we can connect we have to uh, get back on the browser we're going to go to zero tier central now you'll see that's my zero tier dot com keep in mind that logging into your zero tier means that you have created a zero tier uh, network. How are you going to do that? Come over here to zero tier. Uh, we're going to go back. Actually, we'll just open a new tab. But you're going to account. I don't know. Google is a great thing. Do this and you go ahead and how to create a zero tier account network there's even a guide right there uh, we're just gonna go ahead and go here as we are here we're gonna go up no. Zero tier, zero tier, and you're gonna sign up right here. All right, you're gonna put in all your information and all that good stuff in there, okay? And you're gonna register for zero tier. I'm not gonna do that because I already have an account, but once you complete this process here, you'll have an account. So we're gonna log in, right?
There you're gonna log in. Whoa, wait. What's going on? Anything going on here? Oh, of course. I see where the problem is. This keyboard has a messed up key here and the C doesn't always register. So, boom. Now we're in. All right. So after you create that account, no, I don't want to do that right now. All right. So after you create your account, you create your network right here in network. You're going to be able to uh, create a network here. I'm not going to go through all that step. Oh, you know, all those steps. There's plenty of guides out there that show you how to create a network. It's extremely easy. There's, there's not a whole lot to it, but you come over here and you go to your own account. And then you're going to come down here. And this is where you're going to authorize your device. There's quite a few devices in there. So you're going to authorize them in there. All right. There is a box right here to authorize. All right. So that's that. Now we're going to minimize here. We're going to do first off is yes, sudo system control enable zero tier one all right well, so with this what this is going to do is every time you boot your pi is going to connect to zero tier all right so we're going to do that right there give it enter Boom. There we go. That's done. All right. So now, sudo zero tier CLI join. And then we're going to do whatever your network is. All right. So as you saw here, I have a network number. This is my network number. So whatever your network number is, that's what you're going to type right here. All right. So you do sudo zero tier dash CLI join that network. All right. That's that piece. Uh, once you have completed all those steps, this completes your initial uh, setup before we can start running services like uh, free tech server and mumble server uh, if you want it's strongly recommended uh, there's this tool called P sensor go ahead and run P sensor because it's it's gonna allow you to monitor uh, your uh, CPU temperatures and all that good stuff uh, I'm not going to go through the process of doing that. There's plenty of guys out there on uh, on Google that will show you exactly how to do that. All right, But I strongly recommend that you monitor your CPU temps uh, with an easy access icon right here on your top right side. Um, just for the sake of you know being able to monitor your Pi so it doesn't fry up. Not that it's going to with this fan. This configuration is pretty good. So... Uh, it'll keep it it'll keep it nice and cool but it's it's nice to see how much ram are you using how much your cpu is working all those types of things all right so at this point just go ahead and uh do a pseudo reboot and wait up for it to boot all right stay tuned for the next video thanks man